Okay, Vince, here, I, I got a question for you. Okay. You know, Anthony Richardson, the quarterback that was just drafted um, by the coach. All right. A radio show in Indianapolis shared a story from the coach general manager, Chris Ballard, mm -hmm. who was speaking at the NFL rookie orientation program. Now, quarterback Anthony Rich Richardson stayed behind to help the staff clean up the room that was left a mess by all of these rookie players. Even as NFL Executive Vice President Troy Vincent told the Florida Gators prospect that he didn't need to stay. And Richardson responded this way, Vince. He said, we left this room in an unacceptable condition. And it's not right for us to expect the staff to clean it all up. Richardson stayed, Vince, until the room was cleaned up entirely, and he was the last person working along with the workers of the shift. <clears throat> Hearing a story like this, what does that make you think and feel about Richardson? Okay, three of the top things to evaluate any football player or any person in general. And number one is the respect you have, not only for yourself, for others, for elders, Okay, there's respect. You respect your teammates on your team, respect the other team because you'll prepare even that much harder, Jackie. The character that one has, the heart within yourself. What's right, what's wrong. Okay, do what's right. The third thing is, Jackie, is humility. I didn't think, I never knew Anthony Richardson coming in out of this draft. But after what I've just heard from what you said and the way he responded to a mess, that this is an exemplary part of the team. Is this the way we're going to play football? Messy? We're going to play clean. We're going to win. This says a lot about a quarterback, his makeup, his delivery, his leadership, and what he's going to mean to this team. And don't discount the Colts moving forward with Shane Steichen, Steichen as a quarterback. He's going to bring what he brought from Philadelphia on their offensive scheme of things, and he's going to duplicate that with Anthony Richardson. And he's got Gardner Minshew, who believes in him. And he says, this is a stand-up coach. This, this team can go for, far this year. I mean, I, I see them definitely improving over what they had last well, year. Well, I'll tell you, after reading that about Richardson, it gave me a whole different perspective on a young uh, upstart like this. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that impacted me most when I thought about events was I thought to myself, now, there's some guys on that team that are my age, different ages that I was over the years. Uh, I'm sorry there's some guys that he worked with that are going to eventually be my age if they play that long. And they're going to look back and they're going to say, you know, when we were at the rookie symposium, Richardson did this, mm -hmm. you know, when, and he yeah. might remember himself as being one of the guys that left some litter in the room. Right. So right now what he, he garnered was, was respect from those young guys that are coming into the national football league, mm -hmm. a huge a amount rookie. of respect. Because the average guy is not going to do and show himself to be a servant leader like Richardson just right. did in this particular city. It speaks volumes to me right. of what kind of upbringing he had and what kind of leader he's going to be. That's the kind of leader that I want on my That's team. That's the guy Th want, There's no right. doubt about it. All right, Vince, okay. you know, um, there's no first-team reps being allowed for young Bryce Young, okay. the first overall pick. Mm -hmm. Frank Wright, your buddy, and the only quarterback that ever led his team from the biggest come from behind victory in the history of the NFL, okay. Frank Rice says that Bryant Young won't be getting any first-team reps. Hmm. Rice said Saturday, Andy Dalton will take the first-team reps at OTAs, but as a new guy, Young will end up getting the majority of the work. How would you handle Bryce Young, the first overall pick in the draft, national championship winner at highs, uh, down at uh, Alabama? How would you handle uh, getting him on the field. Well, I see. I see this. It, it, it's a it's a duplicate question, Jackie, because uh, it, this is a revolving thing that happens each and every year. You get these young quarterbacks that come into the league; they need to mature. It takes a while to to grab the concepts, the style of play. It's different than college. It's another step. Okay, so Bryce Young. Even though he's Heisman Trophy winner, played Alabama, win national championship, coming in the NFL is a big step. The lucky thing, he's got Frank Wright. Frank's going to bring him along kind of slow. But I don't necessarily agree with him not taking reps with the first team because he's going to be playing, Jackie, with the first team before the season's over. And I can guarantee you that. 
He's too good to sit on the bench. Okay, so he's going to be there. So he needs to get reps. Andy Dalton is not even as good as Matt Ryan was, came in the league. So I don't know how long Andy was going to play because he's the experienced quarterback to start the season. And they'll go as far as they can with him. And Bryce will be learning, observing, and learning as he sits and watches. So, But I, I think they need to give him the reps with everyone. Mm. First team, second team, whatever they've got going. And then I think that's the way he's going to – because he's going to be playing before the year's out. Because if Carolina is going to go and win that south, they're going to have to have Bryce Young, the quarterback, not Andy Dalton. Okay, Vince, I, I will share with you – uh, that I was on the football team when the Rams traded two first-round picks along with Kent Hill, a former first-rounder and a pro bowler, and William Fuller, who became a pro bowler, traded all of those picks and those two great players to Houston for the rights to negotiate with Jim Everett. When Jim Everett came to the Rams, and Jim Everett, as you know, is the Rams' all-time leading passer in yards-wise to this point. But when Jim Everett came to the Rams, it was unbeknownst to us but he had been told that he was not going to play until week five. Now, as I remember, Jim Everett got some reps. He was taking reps, like backup reps, not no starter reps, but he was taking reps with the ones. You know, he wasn't the first guy to step in there, but he did that for five weeks, Vince. Yep. When Vince, when he came in the ball game, the, his first ball game that they started him in, he threw three touchdown passes. We lost the game, but he threw three mm -hmm. touchdown passes, and they were some beautiful throws, great decisions, all of that. And I thought it was a testament to the way John Robson, the great John Robson, our coach, brought him along. So I think there's something to be said about, the, about right. that. Uh, if he's got a game, if Frank has a game plan that he wants to deploy to bring this kid along, and it doesn't include him taking uh, first-team reps, I, I got to believe you know, that he's doing what he thinks is the well, best I thing. Well, I think that's a good point. I, I don't think there was a timetable set for Bryce Young, but there was one definitely for Jim Everett. Yes, they definitely. Five weeks you're going you're gonna to play. And I think this is an unknown thing. So I think that's the reason why it's even more important for you to stay involved, to get the reps, to get enough reps so that you're going to be prepared eventually to go in and play. Yeah. Now, Vince, there's another thing. I, I have a bit of a bone to pick with you. <clears throat> you know, I – you and I played a, together a number of years, and, um, I, and I don't ever remember being invited to go to <laughs> Puerto Rico or Guam or Ma, you know, Maui or any of those places to hone our skills and get ready for the upcoming season. Now, the Cleveland Browns began phase two of their offseason program next week mm -hmm. with Deshaun Watson and some of, its, of his offensive teammates. Yeah. They're going to be participating. But the quarterback is taking 16 of his offensive teammates to Puerto Rico for training and bonding. <laughs> Last year, he took them to Atlantis in the Bahamas. Okay? Vince, you never took me nowhere. <laughs> you never took me nowhere. I gave you, you a Rolex watch. I yeah, gave you, you a Rolex you never watch. Took, you never took me no, to yeah. none of these exotic places. What, what do you yeah. think about that? What, what, what can okay. get accomplished? By a quarterback taking his guys. Well, it, to it these didn't places. seem to help last year when he took them, but on this year vacation, he's taken 16 now. Maybe he needs to take more guys. But I have to tell you this: that this is a way to bond with your with your teammates. Okay, and it's a pretty cool way. But I didn't make. Fifty million dollars a year either, Jackie. You know, I can afford. To you do think that. I had a little to do with it? <laughs> probably so. Yeah, they probably travel in first class too, Jack. Staying at the top hotels yeah, and, it's, it's and just, eating the best food. Yeah, absolutely. No. What it, do you want to eat tonight? It's Whatever just, you it's want. It's just hard to imagine, you know, that the that the guys are doing something like that. I you know, know. you know, the, the, that the salaries but, allow them to do something like that. But Jackie, like look at this. When we played, we played preseason football. We practiced twice a day, every day for six weeks in, in training camp. Absolutely. So, you know, today they don't even play in preseason. Right. So, I mean, so he's going to miss he's going to miss some uh, OTAs. I, I just don't, you know, I don't necessarily agree with that. But when the summer hits, hey, yeah, take a little vacation and get ready, then come back and let's rock and roll. So, mm -hmm. but I think it's more of a bonding. And, you know, Deshaun Watson's a very good quarterback. I think they'll I think they'll be a much improved team this year. Uh, but you, when, when the season rolls around, the, the Cleveland Browns will be ready to play. And, and you do conclude that yeah. this time of bonding is going to be crucial, and it would be crucial for any team to do this. It's a great idea. I mean, to get to know your players. They get to know you personally and uh, believe in you. And, you know, this, uh, this camaraderie is important, Jackie. You mm -hmm. know, as we played, we were a really tight-knit team. Everybody loved each other, and we played for each other. Hopefully, if Cleveland wants to go anywhere – 
in the AFC North, they're going to have to bond and get real close. Right. You know, the, the that brings me to one last subject before we close. You know, when I think of a guy making $200 million, has a $200 plus million dollar contract, and he's a quarterback and a leader, and I know the restraints that are placed on teams as of when they can do any organized training activities at all that are supervised by the coaches, I can see in my mind of minds a part of those lucrative contracts that these guys are getting being earmarked just for such occasions as this. Yes. You know, this extra amount of money is coming to you because we want to encourage our leader at this position to take the guys to the Bahamas, right. spend a week and do this, that, and the other. And this is how we're going to pay for it. I, I, in my mind, I can conceive something like that happen. Yeah, share. It's all about sharing, right, Jackie? You know, share with your fruits of labor. So, you know, hey, you, you work hard and then you earn a certain amount of money and then, hey, let's all enjoy this together. Right. You know, it's like some of the best times I enjoy doing now is we have little family get-togethers and friends over the house, and absolutely. we have a nice dinner prepared, right. and you know, you, you you have your nice Italian are, wine to go with it, and so so absolutely. But I got we'll close on this last note, Jackie. This is uh, this is a, a real interesting take that you maybe can relate it to football. It doesn't have anything to do with football, but uh, this has to do with a, a college student at Henry Ford College in Michigan got to skip ahead of the line to receive her diploma during a graduation ceremony, okay? But she was pregnant and was in labor, okay? Her name was Kelsey Huddle. She was 38 weeks pregnant and her baby couldn't wait any longer. On Tuesday before she gradu graduated, she said she was dilated, but that wasn't going to stop her from walking across the stage <laughs> to receive her diploma. Wait, wait a minute. Okay? What in the world? She welcomed a baby girl, <laughs> you know, Nyla, following the ceremony and plans to become a teacher, according to local news media. <laughs> wait. Well, that, that's wait. a what in the world. That is a what in the world if I've ever heard one, Vince. Ah. I mean, can you imagine? Man. Can you imagine that, man? I mean, she went, she was in, dilated. Dilated. Going to have day a baby. Before. It could be at any time. She was dilated the day before, and she waited around through the rest of that day and the night till the next day to receive her diploma. What's her first name? Her name is Kelsey. 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 Kelsey, you have my complete adoration. <laughs> right. My complete, uh, I, I just can't say enough about you and your That's determination it. there. Gutsy. It was gutsy, Man, I'm everything what. else, because that, this, it was conceivable. Yeah. When you think about this, this, she could have delivered that baby right there on that stage. That's why they call it labor, Jackie, yeah. because she's <laughs> going to be laboring, but she didn't care. She wanted to go get that diploma. Absolutely. So There's a lot to be said credit. about that determination. Woo. Wow. A lot to be yeah. said about that kind of That's what it takes to be in the NFL. Absolutely. You got to be determined to do it. You would have made one heck of an offensive lineman, Kelsey. <laughs> like, no doubt about that. <laughs> well, best of luck to the baby, Kelsey, and uh, hope uh, you have many year, great years of, uh, of enjoyment. So that's, uh, that's it for us today. For, for Jackie Slater, I'm Vince Ferragamo. We want to thank you for watching and listening today on On Point Live right here from the Manhattan Beach Studios. And so until next time, Jackie... Stay, Stay on, on point. point.